Hey everybody, my name is Justin. Today in this video, I want to give a review on Phil Towns Rule One Toolbox. If you've been watching any of my stock analysis videos I've done, typically you're going to see the Rule One Toolbox somewhere in there when I'm talking about fundamentals, financial metrics, and I've gotten quite a few questions over the last several months, you know, what my opinion is or even kind of doing a tutorial on the toolbox itself. So I thought in this video, I'd kind of give a review it, kind of give my thoughts about the toolbox. We'll kind of go through the different aspects of toolbox, what it offers. Uh, I'll kind of share my thoughts and feelings, what I like, what I don't like about the toolbox. We'll talk about how much it costs. Uh, to subscribe to the toolbox itself. And then uh, I'll kind of wrap it all up and kind of tell you who would benefit the most uh, from this toolbox. And I'm not affiliate of Phil Town at all. I'm not getting paid by him or, or anything like that. This is just a no nonsense, my opinion type of video. To get some value out of this video, please smash that thumbs up button. Really helps out the channel a lot. If you like this kind of content, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. So uh, let's just jump right into the toolbox. All right, so as you can see, I'm on rule1investing.com. Uh, and this is just the Rule One site. Uh, and before I actually jump in the toolbox, let me show you guys a couple of things real quick that might be beneficial to you. So one nice thing about Phil Town, what he does is uh, he has a bunch of resources in here. And if you're new to investing um, or if you've been investing for a while, uh, this may be a good little resource for you. So he's got all these investing calculators. So you can actually go calculate ROIC if you want to. You can actually calculate what the intrinsic value of a stock is. All in these calculators right here. So and he, this is for free. Uh, you can just log, you know, or not log. You can literally go to the rule1investing.com website, go to resources and go down here. So you can calculate what the market cap is. You can calculate what the sales growth is. Here's that sticker price, margin of safety. I could actually do a whole video uh, kind of teaching you guys how to use these if, if you wanted to. Uh, but, you know, it, it's fun to go out and just, just play around and see. He even has this Excel formula PDF to explain how to get the formulas uh, in Excel uh, that generate all this stuff for you. So, uh, just might be a nice resource for you. So definitely go check it out if you can. Um, and so we'll, we'll go to the toolbox here. So to get to it, you just go to the toolbox here and then you log in. All right, so we're logged in right now and it automatically takes you to your stock watch page. Uh, before we start writing down any of these ticker symbols that I've saved, just know that I, I've had this toolbox for 18 plus months. And over time, I, I've saved different stocks to the watch list. Most of these stocks, I'm actually not watching at all. <laughs> like I think Costco, I saved. That was one of my first ones that I saved on here. And I'm, I'm not, uh, it'd have to drop tremendously for me even to buy. But uh, a lot of these, I'm just not even watching. So, um, but it's one of those things you can, when you're looking at stocks, you can save to your watch list. Uh, one thing I don't like about this, it, for some reason, it doesn't seem like this is like live data. So like when I've logged in the middle of the day to kind of check out well, like the stock price and stuff, it doesn't seem like it, I don't know, updates like live <laughs> or on on time on, on demand uh, it seems like maybe after the market closes maybe it resets so uh, i don't pay attention too much on the prices on this i actually stopped using this as my watch list i have a i have charles schwab that's what i trade uh or who i use for my brokerage account and in there i actually save all my my stocks I, i'm watching in fact i can go in there and dictate or ask Schwab to send me an email and a text when certain stocks drop below a certain price. So I use Schwab for all my, my watch list. So here's this, uh, you can uh, actually go down and, and look at different market updates. There's, there's news, you can see how uh, the different indices are doing. You can see the market movers for the day. I actually don't even use this stuff down here to be honest with you, but it is down there if you wanna see it. Uh, now, the, I think the, the you know, the real bread and butter for, you know, this this website, there's really two things and, and we'll go through those. So uh, one is really when you're doing research on a company, uh, it gives you some really quick fundamentals uh, that are easy to read, easy to understand. And let me show you what I mean. So uh, let's go take a look at Facebook as an example. Ticker symbol FB. And we'll jump right in here. All right, so 
uh, it first puts you at the stock at a glance. So you kind of see what the, the price of the stock and kind of what it's moved in the last month. You can switch to three months, six months, one year, five year, that sort of thing. You can see the rule number one scores up here. We'll, we'll get to more of that here in a second. I'll explain kind of what's going on. Um, it's some just basic information here, PE ratios, how many shares uh, outstanding, uh, highs and lows. Here's some news. Uh, the recent news you want to go look at for for Facebook, um, but you know it, it's it it does its job. It's certainly um, I, I don't know if I want to say archaic, <laughs> uh, but or outdated maybe in some things. Um, you know it'd be kind of nice if it had kind of I don't know like pictures and or icons and stuff you could click on. Um, but you know it, it gets the job done. I, I'm not too uh, keen on the stock price and the chart. I don't know. It just I don't know. I just don't personally like the way it looks all that much. But let's go to rule one numbers. This is where I spend most of my time. So if you're a fan of Phil Town, you've read any of his books, uh, this is going to make a lot of sense to you. So he always talks about the four M's. He talks about the meaning, the moat, management and margin of safety and so he tries to take fundamentals and then break them down into those different categories so uh, he's got the the meaning right here so like moat score relative rank rule one meaning score overall and keep in mind the higher the score the better it is uh, and if it's it's a green that's a really good score if it's a yellow it's an okay score red is a bad score and you can see that facebook's all in green it's, it's a phenomenal company uh, so we have the meaning here you have the moat so the moat is uh, book value per share earnings per share uh, uh, free cash flow uh, sales growth and this is like a per year basis so you can see like a one year uh, how much it's gone up three years per on a per year like a kager uh, five years seven years ten years uh, so that's 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 nice to see they also have management and what they rate them so they've return on uh, equity return on invested capital and you want to see like a 10 percent or higher that that's when it's green here same thing with these up here you want to see 10 percent or higher uh overall and then we have debt and so typically i if I want, i'm trying to off the top of my head but i believe phil town and his book talked about if they could pay free cash flow off within two years uh then that's that's they're pay off their total debt within two years based on their free cash flow, that would be good. Um, and so you can see that totaling all these up, Facebook has a rule number one score of 97. That is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And then you scroll down here and it actually gives like on a per year basis, you wanna see book value per share. Uh, and book value basically is a total assets my, minus current liability, or excuse me, total assets minus total liabilities, if, if you wanna know. Uh, but you can see it like per year what it is, and then even the last you know three or four quarters, uh, they break down earnings per share, sales per share, uh, cash flow, return equity, I mean, all this kind of stuff. So it's really, really neat, a net profit margin, gross profit margin. So I look at this a lot. I look at this a lot up here too. Uh, and then down here, they have different Things got the P ratio, what the P ratio is the last five years, high and low, price of sales, price of book, a lot of different metrics and, and stuff down here. So uh, I don't really look at this too much. Uh, occasionally I'll kind of look at like the P high and low at times. Uh, I, some of the financial metrics that I get, I actually get other places or, or calculate them myself. But I certainly look at this up here. This is a really good quick uh, you know, quick and dirty, see where the company is, uh, and kind of give you a comparison real quick. Let's take a look at another big company that, uh, you guys would know. So let's take a look at, uh, Apple. Let's just do Apple ticker symbol, A A P L. We'll go there. We'll take a look at their rule one scores. Uh, so a little different again, green is good. Yellow's okay. Red is bad. And you can see that, uh, you know, Apple has a lot of everything. <laughs> they have green, they have red, they have yellow. Uh, so it, it's kind of telling you from, uh, you know, a moat standpoint, certainly the last five years for Apple has not been absolutely you know, spectacular. I mean, the earnings per share has only been up one and a half percent. They're actually down on cash flow, only up three percent on sales growth. Uh, but you look at their ten-year averages; they're just phenomenal. So overall, the moat, their the score is just a, it's an okay score. It's a forty-four. However, the return on equity, return on invested capital, is absolutely incredible. Look at that, man. 
uh, 10 year average 45% and then almost 30% there that that's 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 great so management and, and I would say like out of all these scores I look at management actually the most that, that's my favorite one just because like return on invested capital kind of tells me how efficient and effective management is taking total capital which is uh, total debt uh, total shareholder equity and then turning it into uh, income for the company and also factors in debt as well. So that's so you kind of see, uh, you know, there's a little different here. Predictability zero is not good. So if you buy into Apple, at least on these scores, you don't know how is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? It, who knows? Um, but again, just looking at fundamentals, we're not digging into anything else on this. So let's go back to, to Facebook real quick. All right, and then uh, they have like a price chart. I don't ever look at this. Uh, they have growth rate. Uh, I don't really look at this either. Um, and then margin of safety. This is, I think, another uh, uh, breadwinner for this, uh, this, this website, or this toolbox, right? So you have, we already talked about the other three M's. You got meaning, moat, management. Here's the margin of safety. And this is a calculator, so you can actually calculate what the intrinsic value of Facebook is. And it automatically populates stuff for you. Uh, I, I personally don't use this calculator. I use other calculators uh, that you guys probably have seen in my, my videos. Uh, but they put the earnings per share automatically in here for the trailing 12 months. What the future growth rate is going to be based on analyst expectations. And then they just double for the future PE based on what the future growth rate is. And then you just hit submit down here say warning you know my this might be accurate may not be accurate depending on your inputs there uh, and it's saying stock price is 341 it's saying actually the real value of, of facebook based on these inputs is 475 dollars uh, margin of safety price would be half of that which would be 237 dollars and so that that's kind of what it's kind of giving you and it's saying here's a payback time uh, based on if you buy $175, you get payback in eight years based on their free cash flow. So uh, I used to use this a lot. I don't really use it as much anymore. But you know, certainly if you're new to you know the markets and stuff, this might be valuable to you. Just be careful. Uh, if you put in bad inputs, you'll get a bad value uh, for for valuation. Uh, now, some other things I do like about this is uh, you know the the peers. So you can actually go see peers within uh, this group. So like it'll look at peers for Facebook and kind of see where they're at. So uh, Facebook, their peer group is you have Google, you got Snap, Airbnb, and you can kind of look through and see what their rule one scores are. So it can be a quick, you know, look to see if there's any other companies me you want to take a look at. So sometimes I'll, I'll filter this by rule one score, kind of look at maybe some of the bigger, better scores here, kind of look at their market cap, see if there's any maybe small market caps uh, that look interesting for me to go take a look at here. So uh, that I, f I find that useful. I found some companies uh, doing that as well. Uh, you can actually look at their income statements. You can look at their their balance sheet here. You can look at their cash flow. Uh, so let's go take a look at the in like an income statement for example. I'm I'm not too thrilled about the format of this to be honest with you. I rarely use their financial statements in this toolbox. I, I typically go to uh, Yahoo Finance. Sometimes I look at the 10K. There's other areas I typically go to. Uh, but what is nice is it does go back five years, uh, where like I think Yahoo Finance just goes back three or four years. So they have that here. Um, you can actually also go to... Uh, earnings estimates, I'll go here sometimes, and I'll kind of give you what the five-year analyst consensus growth rate is for earnings, uh, which is interesting because when we went to margin of safety, it showed 18%. So I'll come and take a look at this. I'll look at Yahoo Finance as well, too, on what their uh, growth rates, expectations for you know from analysts or whatever. Um, you know, I, that's this other stuff I don't really look at all that much, uh, to be honest with you, but they do have other target price history and other stuff in here. Uh, another thing I, I do like this toolbox, and we'll kind of go back to the beginning here, is, is a search feature here. So if I can go scam for stocks, and this is where I found Huntington Ingalls. Uh, you can actually go and look globally and try to figure out, you know, what, what are the best of the best companies that you're looking for in criteria. And it's based on rule one scores. You can look at the moat. If you want to look at the best ones, maybe you want to look at anything between a score of an 80 and 100. Uh, management, same thing, 80 and 100. 
predictability 80 to 100 book value per share we'll just say minimum of 80 uh, ROIC we'll say minimum of 80 whoops 80 ROE minimum of 80 oh that there we go uh, and they have other stuff here you can do price like PEs and all kinds of other stuff but let's just take a look uh, actually we'll do earnings per share as well as an 80. All right, and we'll hit submit. And then it's gonna show me every all the stocks within that criteria. So there are 88 stocks uh, within that criteria. Maybe you actually wanna get even further down from there and I'll say, I wanna look at anything that has no more than a PE of 12. Let's, let's check out that. And now there's only nine. <laughs> Uh, only nine companies. So uh, Sportsman's Warehouse, I recognize that one. Uh, Quidel, I think, is on the Magic Formula list, I believe, right now, too. You got Progressive, DR Horton, uh, Joy. I think I want to say that's a Chinese company, I thought. Uh, I think this one might be as well, too. So, I mean, these this 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 tool itself is really good. Now, I did uh, see recently from other YouTube videos that the ticker now is actually having a global uh, type search search quite you know search um engine i guess kind of similar to this uh but this is this is a good feature i, I like it i like it a lot uh, i use it quite a bit so that that one's also good you can also go up to search and you can search you know guru stock so maybe you found a stock you really like right so maybe you found facebook right and you want to know how many people how many actually um uh, uh, super investors own Facebook. Let's see. Ah, it got away from me. Let's try it. Um, there it is. Okay. So if you go here, it's loading. And then we scroll down to the bottom. You can see all these different super investors that own Facebook. So uh, this this can be. I've used it a number of different times. Uh, certainly, uh, Data Roma kind of gives you the same stuff. To be honest with you, uh, one thing I don't like about it, there seems to be some glitches in here. Like I'll look at, you know, a certain, you know, guru stock uh, portfolio, and it doesn't seem to be or show everything that 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 should be in there. Um, like for example, I think Michael Burry for some reason, you know, it was showing half his portfolio. Uh, for so I don't know so I, I don't know if that's a glitch thing but I don't really depend <laughs> on this as much as I, as I used to I, I go to data room for a lot of that uh, so those are just kind of the the, the different things within this to, uh, rule one toolbox another thing too is search three circles so this is really good if you um, I would say are new to the market and this kind of goes on Phil Towns rule one investing book uh, where you, you try to find different areas that you understand, maybe uh, industries that you're passionate about, maybe you understand. So you pick your passion and then you go to the next section and then uh, it asks you what your talents are and you select kind of your different talents and then it goes to another section and then it asks you like what's, you know, what you like to spend your money on and then it takes all those and then basically gives you a list of stocks, companies that you may want to go do research on that you might enjoy. And I think that's a big part of of investing in general if you don't enjoy <laughs> the companies you're looking into you're not going to have a lot of fun um if they're really boring companies you're not really passionate about it you know it kind of goes back to you know making sure that you understand the company you understand the meaning but that uh they align with your your morals as well too on, on that front so uh for so that that's kind of the the you know toolbox in a nutshell overall so Here's, here's kind of my overall opinion about the toolbox and you know what I'd recommend, uh, who would benefit the most from it. And uh, oh, and actually before I get to that, uh, the toolbox itself is $30 a month. That, that's what you pay. Now you can sign up for, I think it's like a 30 day trial if you want to. Uh, so definitely go check it out and try that 30 days. If you don't like it, then just unsubscribe then you don't get charged and uh, go try something else. But uh, it's $30 a month. So here are the group of people I would suggest would benefit most from this toolbox. Number one, if you're new to investing, I highly encourage you to go read Phil Towns' Rule One Investing book. 
and then sign up for the toolbox and it kind of gives you uh, a good flow it kind of goes along with his philosophy on that not only that but there's so much information that you're trying to learn up front uh trying to understand financial statements you're trying to understand 10ks all this other stuff at least the rule one toolbox condenses the fundamentals really easy for you and so it's just it just makes things quicker easier uh as well too another group of people that this would work really well for if you want some of the fundamentals just really quick down and dirty real quick you want to see what the sales growth earnings growth uh you know cash flow all that kind of stuff really quickly this this toolbox does that for you uh, roic roe very very quick which is really nice now you can go calculate all that stuff yourself Obviously, it's gonna take you a lot longer to do than just getting it from the toolbox. But I would say if, if you're new or if you want something, you know, that, that gives you quick fundamentals. Now, that, that the rule one scores and all that, I wanna uh, reiterate, that's not all encompassing. If the rule one score is, uh, you know, 100, which is the highest you can get, and you go to margin of safety and it's, it looks like it's below its intrinsic value, I, I want to say, don't go buy it right away. Do more research. You know, you got to go read the 10K, listening to the earnings calls. There's more to it than just the toolbox itself. So make sure you do those things. Uh, I know it takes a lot of time, uh, but it's well worth it. You know, you can. I, I know for me, when I've, li I've listened to earnings calls, I've actually bought into a company. Uh, CF Industries w was one of those. Dropbox was another one of those just from the earnings calls that, um, themselves. So that's what I have to say about the Rule 1 Toolbox. What do you guys think about it? Uh, what kind of uh, resources you guys use? What kind of websites, uh, paid or not paid, that you use that are beneficial to you when you're stock picking, doing analyzing of stocks? Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button if you haven't. I'll catch you guys on the other side. Take care and God bless.